Hey everyone, in this video, let's discuss some tips for editing bird photographs instead of on one photo raw. My first tip for editing bird photographs is to denoise your image. You know, more often than not, when we're photographing birds, we're using a higher ISO than we normally do, just so that we can capture and freeze the frame of that bird. And so inside Photo Raw, it's really incredibly easy to remove all of that noise with No Noise AI. So with this image here, I'm in the Info tab, and we can see that our ISO is cranked up quite a bit. We have about 12,000 ISO, and that's pretty high and can lead to a lot of graininess and noise within the photograph. But no worries, all we have to do is head into our Develop tab. I'm gonna hide this tone and color pane so that I can quickly access my noise and sharpening pane. Instead of noise and sharpening, I'm going to use this No Noise AI option here. This is going to zoom in to the center of my image at 100% so that I can preview the denoising in real time. On the right is After No Noise AI, and on the left is the original. It's doing a really good job of removing all of that noise in the photograph and getting rid of any of that graininess in the background behind our bird. Now, if you want to adjust or fine tune the noise reduction, just head over here below that no noise AI button and we can use our noise reduction section to modify. Now, I typically keep these at their default but if you want to adjust the detail or increase the sharpening, you can use these sliders to do it. You can also remove a little bit of that noise reduction in, in case you want a little bit of that graininess in your photo by just pulling back on this luminance slider or the color slider. Now keep in mind that if you're looking to enhance the detail or increase the sharpening, if you increase it too much, you may bring back some of that noise that you were looking to remove in the first place. So if you're enhancing detail, just be mindful that too much detail or too much sharpening can actually bring back that noise that you're trying to remove. So something to keep in mind, I think I'm just going to leave these at their default there and I'm going to choose apply. So now with that noise reduction applied to the photograph, I can continue on my edit. And if I need to apply any effects or I need to add any local adjustments, I have my denoised image ready to modify. Let's continue on and let's take a look at the next tip. My next tip for editing bird photographs is to crop and resize. Really simple technique, but has a huge payoff in the end, especially if your composition or the frame that you captured has a whole lot of excess, just nothing in it. Now, when it comes to bird photography, you know, birds are incredibly fast and they're also incredibly unpredictable. And when it comes to capturing those types of animals, oftentimes the frames that we're looking for aren't the frames that we go home with. And that's not a huge deal because with On One Photo Raw, we can easily crop to get the desired composition. And then we can head into Resize AI to enlarge the image up to any size while maintaining all of that detail in that photograph. So with this photograph here, we can see that the composition is lacking a little bit of the subject. You know, we have a whole lot of just sky here, some blurry trees, and then the subject here, the bird, is just sort of minimized down here in the bottom of the image. So to fix that, let's just crop the image real quick. I'm just gonna hit C on my keyboard to grab my crop tool. Now, depending on the image, you may want to modify your crop ratio, which you can do up here in this menu. Now, I think for this image, a three by four would look fine just because the bird is a little bit elongated this way and it also has the wing going down. And I don't really wanna do just a one by one because I want to give it a little bit of a, an edge there where he's heading into the, the sky. So I think a three by four would work great. So I'm just going to pull the crop down quite a bit here to eliminate a lot of that excess that we don't need. probably about right there. Could probably crop it even a little bit more. 
let's do right there. And with that crop, we've removed a lot of that excess from the areas surrounding our bird. And we're now left with a nice composition here where we've maximized our subject and we can actually see all of the details there. Now, because we cropped, we don't really have too many of those details sharp in the scene. So let's use Resize AI to bring back those details into our photograph. I'm just going to head over here to the right side of my screen. I'm going to choose Resize AI. And inside of Resize AI, I can see that I have my pixel dimensions right here. So it's a relatively small photograph. Let's use this Resize to Percentage option here to resize this to 400%. So if I zoom in here, it's maintaining all of those details and even the water droplets within the bird here. And even that nice smile in the beak there with that resize AI algorithm. I'm just going to preview the before and after here. So on the left is without resize AI. And on the right is with that resize AI in action, doing a really great job of just bringing back those details that we're looking for in the bottom of that bird. And the best part is, once I head down here and choose done to save the image, I can actually save it as a DNG file. So that's how to crop and resize. Let's head on to the next tip. My next tip for editing bird photographs is to relight your subject and background. And an easy way to do that is to use local adjustments. So what I want to do here is I sort of want to swap the lighting. I want to take this bright background and sort of darker subject, and I want to swap the two. I want to have a darker background and then a brighter subject. So to do that, Let's just quickly hit K on our keyboard. K is going to grab my super select AI tool. And with that tool selected, I can hover over different regions of my image. And with that red overlay on top of them, that's just indicating to me that it's identified that region in my image. If I want to modify a region, I can select it, turn it blue, and then I can just right click and I can apply adjustments or filters to the photo. In this case, I want to apply an adjustment and I want to apply an exposure negative adjustment. Just like that. That will add in that adjustment into my local tab here. I'm just going to rename this burn or darken background because essentially we're burning the background to darken it around our owl there. Now I'm just going to fine tune this burn local adjustment layer here. Going to add in a little bit of contrast. And I'm also just going to boost the whites just a hair. The reason that I'm boosting the whites is because I don't want that region behind my bird to appear flat. I want it to be a bit darker, but I don't want it to be flat. And you can see that by adding in just a little bit of those whites, it helps to ensure that that background behind my bird pops out. So if we turn this off and on here, doing a great job of darkening up that background. Now all we have to do is give the owl a little bit more light. Now to do this, I'm actually just going to paint the adjustment in with a masking brush. So let's add an adjustment. And I'll rename this Dodge or Lighten. Because when we're dodging, we're brightening or we're lightening up certain areas in our photograph. So in here, I'm just going to go into my More Options and I'm going to choose Midtones Plus. That will increase my midtones to around 30. Let's also add in a little bit of contrast there. 
and I'm going to hold down shift and hit K on my keyboard and that will grab my adjustment brush. Remember, I'm going to brush this in rather than using super select AI to mask it in for me. And the reason that I want to brush it in is just because if I just do a couple brush strokes here, I'll just decrease the brush size with the bracket keys on my keyboard. But you can see that just by brushing it in gently into the right side, I don't really need too much more than that because this left side has a little bit of light. I don't need too much more on the scene other than just a little bit of painting in. And this is sort of where personal preference comes into play and how much light you would want on your bird here. But I'm just adding in just a little bit, just enough to sort of illuminate that right side and that middle section there. And let's also maybe add in just a little bit of a little bit more contrast there just to ensure that we have some detail popping. And we could also add in a little bit of structure there as well. So if I turn this up and on, doing a great job of just illuminating that section of bird there and ensuring that we have a nice bright subject on a darker backdrop. So let's just hit the backslash key on our keyboard to view the original. Original and after with some modifications. And you could also go in here and fine tune with even burning this section here of the bird there and darkening that area, adding in a little bit of light here. It's sort of all up to you when it comes to bird photography. One thing I would recommend is trying to keep things natural and balanced. When it comes to wildlife photography, most of the time you want your image looking pretty natural and you don't really want to do too much to it or make it appear too creative. You want that bird or that wildlife or whatever is in your photograph to seem natural in its natural habitat. So let's take a look at another example of relighting our scene. So with this bird here, we can see that it's much darker than our backdrop and we may have to illuminate more in here than in that last example. So we're going to do the same technique. I'm going to hit K on my keyboard here, and I'm just going to grab all of the sections around my bird there. Then I'm going to right click. We'll go into our adjustment. We'll use that same exposure minus, which is just removing, removing the exposure by negative one stop there. And so if we turn this off and on, it's doing a great job of darkening up that background there. But there's a couple areas around this bird that we need to clean up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint in a little bit more of that adjustment into the areas surrounding my bird, just to ensure that we don't have any haloing going on. So I'll hit B on my keyboard. So I'll hold down Shift and hit K on my keyboard again to grab my adjustment brush. And I'm going to make sure my mode is set to paint in. I have a nice soft feathering, opacity is at 100, flows at 100. And let's just paint in that adjustment into these regions. Just sort of on the top and around these wings here. And then we'll also paint in there just to ensure we don't have a big bright spot there. Perfect. So now what I want to do, I already painted in that darkening adjustment into the area surrounding my bird here. Now I just want to remove those areas from this branch here. So we were in our paint in mode. Let's just switch that from paint in to paint out. And you can also do that by holding down shift and hitting X on your keyboard. And I'm just going to gently paint it away. It doesn't have to be too exact here, but I just want to see a little bit more of that detail 
in my branch here. I'll decrease the brush size with just that left bracket on my keyboard. The right bracket will increase the brush size. And I can just get a little bit more exact here. And we actually may just leave that in there just to keep that dark. But perfect, I think that's looking really good so far. I'll just zoom out just a little bit here. So if I head over to my adjustment here, let's just rename this again, darken, burn. And by turning that off and on, you can see it's doing a really phenomenal job of just, again, just sort of relighting that scene a bit. And I'm just seeing this area of top here that we may need to clean up. So shift K on the keyboard. And there we go. Just fix that area right there. Zoom back to 100 here. And now that we've darkened things up, let's bring in a little bit of light into our bird. So again, we'll add an adjustment. I'll rename this Brighten or Dodge. And let's just go into our tone section here and let's just manually bring up some of these sliders here. I've just reset that exposure slider to zero because I want to increase the light. I don't want to darken anything with this adjustment. And let's increase the midtones quite a bit there. The whites a little bit and the contrast. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to brush this adjustment into that region of my bird there. And I'll just lower my brush size a little bit so that I can get a little bit closer to the top areas there. And you can see that by brushing this in just nice and gently into those different regions, we get some nice light inside of our bird there. So let's just hit the backslash key on our keyboard to view the original. And it's looking great. You know, we could easily go in here and just sort of fine tune these. So if we want to fine tune this opacity on either of these, we can adjust just to ensure that, again, things look nice and natural. And let's just add in a little bit more contrast into that background adjustment. And again, we'll boost the whites a little bit there. And I think for the Brighton adjustment, I think the opacity looks pretty good quite high, around 85 or so. And so again, let's just check the before and the after. Here's the original. And here's with some relighting in the scene through local adjustments and some dodging and burning. Let's take a look at the next tip. My next tip for editing bird photographs is to selectively apply your filters, whether it be detail or glows or whatever filter you're looking to apply, I would recommend selectively applying it into specific regions of your photograph to maintain that natural looking wildlife photo. So for example, when it comes to detail, more often than not, when we're capturing photographs of birds or wildlife, you know, we want the subject to stand out within the scene. And oftentimes, we'll head into the develop tab here, and we'll pull up on this structure slider. Now pulling up on the structure slider is indeed going to enhance that detail. You know, we can see that we have a lot more texture and micro contrast within our photograph and this bird is, you know, really detailed in the scene. But with the background here, what was, you know, a nice soft out of focus background is now sort of crunched up with detail. And it just doesn't look very appealing and it can be a little bit distracting, especially when we're trying to focus on the bird. So what I would recommend doing is selectively applying these types of filters into those regions that you want to be modified. So for detail, let's go into the effects tab here. I'll add a filter 
And with my filters dialog here, I can actually go over to this apply with mask to option and I'll just choose animal. That's going to identify the animal there. You can see it's highlighted in blue, indicating that it's selected for this particular filter that I'm going to apply. And then let's just choose dynamic contrast to quickly mask in dynamic contrast into that specific area. Now, just for demo purposes, I'm going to go into dynamic contrast and I'm going to choose this surreal preset here. It's a really intense preset. As you can see, if I turn this off and on here, it's really quite strong on the bird there. But I want you guys to be able to see sort of the difference as a modifying. You know, you can always fine tune this to your personal taste. So we've already modified that bird there. What I typically do in these situations now that I've added in detail and texture into a specific region, more often than not the bird in my photo, I'm going to use the mask that I just created. I'll copy this mask. Let's add a filter and I'll just add sort of a contrasting filter to dynamic contrast, if that makes sense. I'm going to add the glow filter, which is sort of a soft, glowy blur filter. But I really like it for backgrounds, especially ones that are out of focus. So let's go in here. I'll choose darker. And I'm going to go into the masking options. And I'll paste that mask to paste that mask that we just created with our dynamic contrast. But I need to invert it so that it's applied everywhere but that bird there. So now if we view this, the bird area is protected. It still has that dynamic contrast applied to it. And we've brought in a nice soft glow into the area behind him. And so if we hit the backslash key on our keyboard, by selectively applying these filters, We've maintained a much more natural looking photograph because we didn't crunch up the entire scene and we didn't add in that soft blurry glow everywhere. We've just added them in selectively to the regions that we want. My next tip for editing bird photographs is to target specific colors in your image so that you can adjust the hue, the saturation, and the brightness of them. And an easy way to do that is to go in the effects tab. We'll add a filter and we'll add the color adjustment filter. Inside of the filter here, we have this row of different colors that we can choose from. And with these selected here, we can modify the hue, saturation, and brightness of that specific color. So for example, I have yellow selected here. If we want the yellows a little bit brighter, we can pull up on that slider there. And let's say we want them a little bit more saturated as well. We're just targeting those specific colors in the region and it's not adjusting any of the other areas. We can, of course, fine tune how much of the yellows in the scene are targeted with this range slider here. Now, rather than selecting specific colors here, we can also use this color dropper option here to target specific colors that way. Now I'll first use this menu here. Let's say I want to adjust the saturation. I have adjust saturation selected here. I'm just going to select this color dropper and I'm going to hover over this sort of orange section in my background. I'll drop that down and as I pull to the left or the right, it's going to fine tune that slider in that color adjustment filter. So this is an easy way to target a specific color within your scene without actually choosing from this menu there. So let's do the same thing with our yellows here. I'll just drop this down, drag it a little bit there to the right to boost those yellows in the scene. And I may do the same thing with these reds. So we've really just gone in, we've left 
the greens sort of how they are, but we've boosted the oranges, the yellows, and the reds in the photo. Let's go in here, we'll adjust the hue this time, and then now let's target their sort of greens in the image there. And we can sort of fine tune the hue there, maybe even give them a little bit more of a yellow tinge. Yeah, let's go over to the right a little bit more with that. I'll actually just pull that hue over to the right there. Give it a little bit more of a blue vibe there. But I like it. You can see that we've gone and we've targeted those specific colors in our scene so that we're not again adjusting the entirety of the photograph. We're just adjusting those specific areas in the scene. So if I turn this up and on again, again, just modifying those greens a bit, the yellows and the oranges and ensuring that they're saturated and that we've modified those specific colors of the photo. My next tip for editing bird photographs is to fix the focus by using Tax Sharp AI. So with this pelican here, if I zoom in, it's just lacking that sharp focus that we need to ensure that the bird stands out within the frame. So what we're going to do here is we're going to selectively apply that focus by using two different layers here. So I'm going to duplicate my original layer. I'm going to rename it focused. Now let's head down into that noise and sharpening pane. And let's actually just check our info here. And at 1250 ISO, there's probably a little bit of noise in the scene there. So let's actually use this both option here. With this both option, it's actually going to use no noise AI and tag sharp AI. That way we can remove the noise from the scene while also ensuring that we have focus where we need it. So let's just pan over here. So as we pan over here to the bird, we can see that Tax Sharp is doing a really awesome job of bringing in that focus that we need to see those details. We can actually also see that fish that he just grabbed right there. We can see his little tail. So we can see the Tax Sharp focusing is working and the sharpening is working. Now all we have to do is selectively apply this to ensure that the background behind our bird stays nice and soft. So to do that, we're just going to apply modifiers there in that noise and sharpening pane. And so now that both of those are applied to our focus layer here, we can see we have a much more focused photograph, but we still have a really sharp and detailed background and we don't actually want that. So really easy fix. All we have to do is go into our layers pane here. We'll use the masking options. I'll go into this mask AI menu and I'm going to choose animal. Now by default there, the mode is set to paint out, meaning it's going to paint away that adjustment from whatever I choose. All we have to do is go in here to this menu and choose paint in. And it will ensure that because I've selected animal there, it's painted it in rather than painting it away from that particular section. So I can see here in my masking options that I have just that bird from that focus layer on my scene. And if I turn him off and on, he's doing a great job of bringing that focus that we need into that region to ensure those details are sharp and in focus. Let's just crop this quite a bit here. And there we go. Now that we've cropped it, we've removed that excess there. Let's just take another look at the before and after. So this is before, and this is with that tack sharp AI layer on top, ensuring that we have the focus and the sharpness that we need. My last tip for editing bird photographs is a little on the creative side, and I know we talked a lot about maintaining that natural look 
within our bird edits. But what the heck, it's the last tip in this lesson. So let's get a bit creative with our bird portrait here. So what we're gonna do for this last tip is we're actually going to swap out the sky so that we can incorporate a much more interesting background behind our bird. To do that, let's just head into the sky tab here. And if we go into the masking options for sky swap AI, by default, it's going to do a pretty good job of finding that bird and removing the sky from it. But we still have these places in here, especially at the top of our bird where that mask is sort of shining through. So to fix that, let's just view our photo and I'm going to use this mask AI menu to choose my flora and my animal there. So that's chosen the branch and then the bird. And by default, it's going to paint it away from these regions that I have selected. So let's just choose apply. So if we view this now, it's doing a much better job of just removing it entirely from those regions. Now, when it comes to swapping out the sky behind a bird portrait, it takes quite a bit of sort of fine tuning and finding an actual sky that works great for that particular image. Not every bird portrait is going to look great with every sky and not every sky is going to look great with every bird portrait. So it does take a little bit of sort of practice and playing around with. So inside of the SkySwap AI here, let's go into our OcuDrone category sections here. And I'm gonna to go to this seriously stormy option. I was playing with these earlier and I found that this guy here, this number nine in that OcuDrone seriously stormy works really great for this particular image. And before we actually go in and modify our sky here, I'm just gonna go in and I'm just gonna clean up these regions here where that sky needs to actually be covering. So to do that, I'm going to hit B on my keyboard. That'll grab my masking brush. And I'm going to ensure that my mode is set to paint in. I want paint in because I want to paint in the sky over these regions that need a little bit of fine tuning. And before I do that, I'm actually going to enable my perfect brush option here. The perfect brush will enable me to paint over those particular regions that need to be cleaned up while avoiding the other areas in my scene. So there's a couple regions here, this region there, just clean that up a bit. And then there's a region up top here. There we go. Oops, not the right color there. So you really wanna keep that middle of the brush on the area that you want to clean up. So that looks pretty good there. We'll just zoom out. And now, so we've gone in and we've cleaned up those areas that needed a little bit of fine tuning. Now all we have to do is just adjust the look of our sky to fit the scene. So to do that, let's just head into our appearance section here and I'm going to brighten things up all the way. That's going to match that really bright sky that we had in our scene earlier. Then I'm going to head down to this foreground lighting section and I'm just going to disable that. And the reason that I want that disabled is because I really like this sort of illumination that's happening within the scene. It almost looks as if there's a break in the clouds and we have some sunlight blasting into our bird. So if I turn off my sky here, you can see it's bringing in a lot of interest into the background, but the colors in the scene are a little bit off. So to fix that, let's go into the effects tab and let's style with a couple of filters. So I'm gonna add a filter here and I'm gonna add one of my favorites for styling and that's the LUTs filter. And I really love this preset here. It reminds me of sort of a, a Westworld uh, type color grading look within the scene. And one last filter here, just to give it some contrast, we'll use the grunge filter. And just like that, by swapping out the sky and adding in those two filters, we've made it look much more natural and believable. So if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, here's the original, and here's after with that sky swap and those creative filters. Those are some tips for editing bird photographs. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson.